Hello, I am here with a solo playthrough of Final Girl. Um, this is the Creech Manor feature film box. Um, I've got it all set up. I'm using Selena, who starts with six life. So let me go ahead and put that, uh, set that up. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I do need to shuffle these up a little bit. Just to make sure. Oh. Just draw one, and the one that's face down, I'll pick. So do this one. All right. Then let's see here. Um, we've got the setup with this uh, dancing queen setup. So we have the number of meeples with the numbers, and then this one is me. That's the final girl, and this will be the location of the killer. So I've got this all set up. I have the items uh, already. Um, uh, set up there. We have the garage, attic, and closet in terms of items. And then the point of this poltergeist box, feature film, really is to defeat the poltergeist. And the only way to do that is to find Carolyn. And Carolyn is in one of these piles of the item cards. So Carolyn, I have to make sure she follows me once she's revealed into an exit. And the exit is in one of these three spots on the bottom of the, the manor. So um, hopefully we'll get there. We have the action card tableau all in the pile here to conserve space. I have my six starting cards. We have a walk, walk, short rest, weak attack, focus, and focus. So these are the cards you start off with, and you can tell which one is which with these uh, zero uh, time cost. So the time starts at six, and then the horror will be uh, starting at three based off of this, uh, this, this number here. I have the event card shuffled. I have the terror card shuffled. So we're pretty much ready to start. Um, and hopefully you'll get a gist of how this game plays. This is a solo only game, which is amazing. Um, if you've ever played Hostage Negotiator, this will look very familiar. It's the same kind of mechanic as, as that game in terms of you know taking actions and then losing time. And then there's this track that tells you how much dice you can use, how many dice you can use to to uh, roll for horror. Um, so we'll get started. The phases are listed here. We have action, planning, killer, panic, and upkeep. So we'll go through each of those as we play the game. So let's start with the action phase where we can play any of our action cards as long as we have enough time to play it with. Um, so I think right off the bat, um, so I started here with these two. We have, we, you know, first thing you actually have to do is to flip over an event card. So let's see. It says, pushed to the edge. Um, roll a die for each victim in a window space. Okay, so it's one, two, three. So there's three victims. And if the roll is a failure, that victim jumps and is killed. Ooh. Roll a die for each victim in a, if the roll is a failure. Oh, my goodness. So right off the bat, I could possibly lose three victims and lose the opportunity to save them. When you save a victim, they end up going on your card. Once you fill out your card, you can flip it over and get the, the special ultimate effect. So that's not good. Um, we get to discard this card after. So, all right, we'll roll a die for each victim. Let's roll for this one to start with. It's a five. So it is a success. So they do not um, jump. So let's roll for this one. This 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 victim. Ooh, not a success. So this one ends up jumping. All right, and then we have this one here. Success. Okay, so it did not end up jumping. So only one one victim jumped, which is fine. So let's put this uh, on the bottom. It says to discard. So I'll just put a face up on the bottom, and then we can start our turn, our action phase. Um, so I do want to try to get these people to safety as soon as possible. And the ways to get to the safety, the exits are to go to these spots, which has the arrows, or to get here, and I could go this way. Um, so in that case, I think I will try to get here because it's a little bit closer, but fortunately the room I'm in doesn't have um, a connection to these two upper level rooms. I have to go left and then up. So to do that, I'm going to want to walk. So let's roll two die, two dice, and if it's a success, I can move up to two spaces and spend one time. If it's only one success, move up to one space and spend one time. If it's a complete failure, I still get to move one space, but I lose one life and take two time. Um, so I'm going to play walk and see what happens. 
Okay, so I did not get any successes right off the bat, but these two icons on this die, uh, you'll see on another face of this die as well, means you could uh, discard two cards from your action card hands and um, make it into a success, a forced success. So I think I'll go ahead and do that and discard my two focus cards and make this into a success roll. So at least I have one success, which means I move up to one space, but I also lose one time. So I'm down to five time and I get to move up to one space. And if I move into a space, I could bring two victims with me as long as there's no card telling me I can't move a certain victim. So I brought two of them with me, but you can only bring a max of two with you. Keep that in mind. All right, um, do I want to walk again? And I think I will. So let's walk and see what this roll gives us. One success. Um, so this one is blank, so unfortunately this is a failure roll. I can't actually trade in any cards to make it into a success. So unfortunately I can only roll one space and I lose one time. So I'm at four and I can move up upstairs by one level, bring two victims with me. All right, so I think, let's see here. I think that's all I want to do. So you could choose to pass. I have four time left, but I don't want to use these right now. So I think I will save my four time. So we'll, we'll move into the planning phase, which says purchase action cards. So now is the time to purchase action cards. I cannot purchase any of the ones I just played, so only from the ones that were not played. So let's see. I have four time to spend, and you see the cost on the bottom right of each card for how much it will cost you to buy this card to play. So let's see. I think I want a sprint and a sprint this make a sprint twice next turn so that's four down to zero so that's all i can buy this turn don't have enough time to buy anything else and let's go back to six to reset and then now it is the killer's turn so the killer phase resolve killer action so this says to target closest uh victim or final girl and it looks like the victim will be the closest one Actually, yeah, one, two. Um, so just so you know, the blood loss value here tells you how many it can move per boot. So it can move twice, um, two spaces. So one, two will get them to one victim. And it'll have to move one, two, three to get to the final girl. So it's going to target this victim. So let's move, it, move that into here because it can move twice. And it will do one damage to it. So when it does one damage, the victim is de dead and the bloodlust goes up by one. And unfortunately, that increases my horror. Um, so what happens when you reach that level? You do whatever is in this left side box. Okay. And now we do the terror card. This is corp corporal form. A behemoth appears. You may play action cards that inflict damage if you wish. Then if the behemoth is still alive, you do all these things. So let's see. I can... I don't think I can actually kill it, uh, unfortunately. So, let's see. It is still alive, so that means I take damage equal to the killer's attack, attack value plus one. So the killer's attack value right now is a one. So it's plus one. So I take two damage already. Wow. Two damage. Um, I have nothing to defend with, unfortunately. I didn't get any of those action cards. And then it says if I take damage, which I do, I have to discard an item of my choice. I don't have any items to discard, so nothing there. And then lastly, the behemoth disappears. Okay, so that is resolved. And now we move into the panic phase. If a victim was killed this turn, which there was a victim that was killed this turn, panic all victims in killer's space. So the killer's right here, and there's no other victims there. So that means you don't actually have to do the panic. There's nothing to panic. So we move back to the action phase where I could play my cards. I only have four cards to play, but I think I'm definitely going to try to sprint. So let's sprint. And we have one success, possibly two if I want to discard two cards. So I'll discard two cards and now this is a success. I will move three spaces and spend one time. I'm at five times. So I'll move three spaces. Um, so I want to try to make it to here to save people so i think i will but also i want to be able to search um because if i search i can find carolyn faster because don't forget carolyn is in one of these items and the only way for me to win is to find carolyn in these item item stacks and then bring her to an exit so hmm. but at the same time if i fill up my selena uh, with the four victims that i need 
when resolving a search action card, I could roll a two additional dice. So this could really help me out here. All right. Um, so I do want to try to fill this up to save with save at least four victims. So I'll move three with these people. So it's one, two, three. I'll bring those 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 two with me the entire way and then I will want to try to sprint again this time I don't have any cards in hand to discard if I happen to get one of uh, these rolled so I'm hoping for natural successes here I need at least one movement so no matter what I think I just need one success um, uh, actually no success is fine because this allows me to move up to one space oh, gosh no success. I move up to one space, so I'll move them down here to one space, and that means I save these two. So uh, let's let's make sure we get this right. So we lose one life, that's one gone, and we also lose two times, so we're down to three, and then the turn ends there. I can't play any more action cards. Not that I had any left, but that's what that, that means. So these two victims that I saved gets to be placed anywhere on any of these four spaces that I want to place it on. And then I get those um, benefits right away. So I could either gain more time, move a space. I think I'll move a space for sure, and then I will... Um, Take a search action card action if I oh wait no I can't because I'm not in any of those okay so instead I'll I'll gain two more time this way I could buy some stuff so I'll gain two time not five and then I'll also do move one space so I can move back so in order to get back into the house I have to use the ladder um, with these arrows here that point to the right that means I can only go down because yeah I can only only go down okay so. With that, I will purchase some cards. I have five time to spend on cards. Um, and I'll definitely try to get, yeah, I'll get these four free cards. You can have up to 10 cards. So I'll get the four back to my hand for free. So I didn't spend any time yet. I have five left. Um, I do want to make sure I get some search going. Um, but meanwhile, I do want to save some people. So I'm going to need to move at least one two and then have a third victim and then move some more hmm. maybe I'll go to the attic and save those people so I'm gonna definitely need some movement um, which I don't think I have any sprints to use because I reuse them so I think let's we'll do the close call for one and then uh, search for two, so that's total of three. Then I have two more time to spend. Hmm. Two more time. So the only thing that I can really do here is another search card, just in case. So I'll do another search card. So that's a total of two, three, four, five, which makes it go down to zero, and then you reset it to six to prepare for the next action phase. Then it's the the uh, killer phase. So the killer will go to the the closest, either final girl, which I'm all the way over here, so I'm likely not closest. This will be the closest. So it's going to go upstairs to this victim and it's going to attack. It's going to kill one. So that means it goes up to the next level of the bloodlust. It triggers the dark power to be revealed. And this is stiff wind. So this says all of your moves of two or more spaces are reduced by one space. So if there's sprint and I get three moves, I can only move two, which sucks. <sighs> anyway. That's that. And then we do a terror card. The shadows are closing in. If there are no victims on the board, there are. Discard and draw the next terror card. Otherwise, increase two horror. So now I'm at six. Potentially, if I get up to here, then I'll start only needing, only being able to roll one horror roll. Die. Okay. Okay. And then next, it will target a victim and move. So it will target, Um, I guess I'll target this one. And then it will attack because it does it does one damage, it's dead. And then that means this goes up by one because it damaged a victim. All right, so that is the terror card. It's resolved. Now the panic phase. There's nothing in the um, the killer's room, so no panic. Now it's the upkeep. Nothing there. So now we will move to the action phase. I definitely need to walk to do much of anything. So let's walk. Okay, we didn't get any successes. 
Um, is there anything we can discard to at least get one success and move one space? Yeah, let's do that. We'll discard two focus cards and we get to move one space and lose one time. So I'm down to five. Move one space this way. I'll do another walk. Um, at least one success, please. Okay, there we go. So we can move up to one space, lose one time. And then we're up here. So with, with that victim, I'm not sure there's anything else I can do. Um, yeah, search, unfortunately, I don't think I can do. If I was at the garage, at the attic, or the closet, I could do a search, but I'll have to end my turn there. Um, we'll go to the planning phase, purchase action cards. I have four time to spend on action cards. Um, I'll add short rest and weak attack to both zero cost back to my hand. And let's see, I'll, I'll get a sprint. And another sprint for a total of four. So that brings me down to zero. I'll reset. Now it's the killer phase. The killer will do its thing. It's going to go to the closest victim or final girl, and it will be this one. So it's one, two, three, four. Um, so unfortunately, it can only move to, uh, two spaces for now. So it's going to just go two closer um, to that to that victim. Um, and that's that. And then we have the terror card. Um, I gain, oh no, we gain one horror, so that means we only get to roll one die. Place a poltergeist with the closest victim. Okay that one and then uh, um, it will attack okay so it'll attack one and then goes up and unfortunately it's supposed to go up twice so that means I take uh, it gets bloodlust twice because that's what that symbol means um, that means increase bloodlust by one and because it happens twice it does go up twice which is not very good uh, and then that's it. That is the killer phase. Panic phase, nothing happens. Upkeep phase, nothing happens really. So back to action phase. I think I'll definitely need to sprint. So unfortunately, I can only roll one die because of this. So let's roll one. Actually, should I? Do I have a f anything that can increase? I mean, decrease the horror? No, I don't, of course. Okay. So let's do that. It's a fail. I will play a close call to try that again. Um, roll. It's another fail. Not rolling very well. Goodness. So that failed. I'll play another sprint and attempt to roll again. Okay. That was a success, I swear. Um, and I get to move up to two spaces, but with the stiff wind, I have to reduce it by one so I can move one space. So I'll move one space and I'll move to the trophy room. Um, and then I will have to lose uh, one time. So I'm down to five. Um, and then I think I'll do a short rest. This way I could gain a life. So let's hope I get something here. Yes, success. So I gain one life. But I do have to spend one time. And I think I'm going to end my turn there. Um, so I have four time to spend. Um, we'll get some of the zero cost back to my hand. And then let's see where we'll spend the four. I think we'll want to do something that could decrease the horror a little bit. Uh, I don't know what. Um... Planning, planning might be nice. So we'll do planning for four. Okay. So we'll reset that after we spent all of it. And then the killer phase resolves the killer action. So it's going to go, so it's one, two, three, one, two. So yeah, so no brainer. That's going to go to the final girl. It's going to attack me. Um, it's going to attack me for two. So I take two life. And for each damage I take, I discard the next tarot card. So that's one, and that's two. Okay, so those are discarded. Um, and now we will do the draw tarot card. So draw. Place the poltergeist in your space. It's already there. And if I take any damage, all my moves during the next action phase are panicked. Not good. So it's going to attack me for two. Again, so that's one. And then we'll see. This is the last life I have. Um, if the other side of this token is blank, then that means I lose the game. So let's see. All right, well, there you go. Game over. I have been killed by the poltergeist. So the final girl did not make it this turn. It's, uh, 
it, it was a pretty quick game, like what twenty minutes, I would say. Um, it's it's really luck of the the roll, honestly. Obviously, there's there are actually it's pretty strategic. I shouldn't say it's just down to a roll. You really have to know which cards to buy, and you have to plan ahead where you want to go if you're gonna search. And I didn't even get to search. Carolyn was in one of these piles. Um, let's see, wasn't in this one. Always curious where Carolyn is. Whoa, Carolyn was uh, was the one right underneath the padlock in the attic. So if I made it to the attic and searched, um, and searched, uh, and got the two two item search uh, ability, then. I would have found Carolyn and I would have hopefully been able to get her downstairs all the way to an exit and win the game. That's literally all I had to do. Um, but anyway, that is Final Girl with the Preach Banner feature film box. I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it was a quick one, unfortunately, but um, I had fun. So I will uh, see you guys around. Thanks.